Welcome Northeast Conference fans to our latest NEC Now podcast on the NEC Overtime Pod. Today I'm joined by recent Bryant University graduates and the founders of Be Better Bryant, Brianna Bruni, Nicole Kim, Ashley Costa, and Jana Blackstone. As part of the Northeast Conference's educational initiative focusing on voter registration, we will be discussing the importance of civic engagement and exercising one's right to vote. Thank you all for being here. I'm so happy to have you. Brianna and Nicole, you both competed on the Bryant University volleyball team for four years. In 2018, you won the Northeast Conference Volleyball Championship. Coming out of high school, what made you choose Bryant to continue your athletic and academic careers? So for me, at least, like, I definitely knew that I wanted to go into accounting, and Bryant is, like, definitely, like, one of the best business schools, like, kind of near us. Um, and also, I was just, like, kind of recruited um, by Teresa Garlisi, like, the head coach, and I wasn't really having like that many um, other G1 offers. So I kind of was like, this is like my chance to um, go to like a pretty great school and then also play volleyball. Uh, yeah, so coming out of high school, um, I knew that I wanted to go to a smaller school just to get that kind of community feel. Um, and so when I was looking at different schools and of course, uh, when Teresa was recruiting me, um, I kind of went through Brian's website and me being from Florida, I couldn't really fly over there to do a campus visit, but so I had to just rely um, on online. Um, but I definitely got the feel that it was a place where um, if I needed help, I can just kind of walk into my professor's office and he, he or she would be able to help me. Um, so that was kind of where I was thinking in terms of how I uh, picked Bryant as the place for me. Yeah, that's great. Um, and now just opening up to all four of you, I was just curious how you met. I know three of you were psychology majors. I kind of assumed there'd be a connection there, but yeah, what, what started the, you know, the, the core four? So me and Brie were like obviously teammates and stuff like that. And then Jana like lived on like the same floor as us freshman year. And then we kind of just like snagged her as like our um, suite mate for like the next three years and stuff like that. And then um, Jana and Ashley, they're both in like the acapella group um, on campus. Yeah, so I was, I met Brie and Nikki the first night of college. So and I guess I could say the rest was history. We, we became um, really great friends and Brie was also a psych major so she was also in a lot of my classes and same thing with Ashley as well um, and then yeah Ashley um, and I were in the bottom line which was the acapella group on campus so we were able to become close with that and you know we were all be able we all you know had this passion um, for you know social justice and we all just kind of came together um, which is awesome. Yeah, that's great. And speaking of that passion, so can you just tell our listeners about what Be Better Bryant is and why you wanted to start it? So Be Better Bryant is kind of um, obviously an initiative that all four of us came together to do. Um, our vision was basically to create um, an outlet where people can have a safe space to speak and also feel heard and also feel um, like fought for um, and supported. So we kind of created this um, right now. I mean, it started as just like an Instagram platform and it has um, luckily grown into something so much bigger. Um, so that's kind of what it is that we stand for. And I have to imagine a lot of work goes into maintaining something like this. And, you know, you're out of school with either full-time jobs or grad school. Um, can you talk a little bit about what actually like goes into it on the back end? Um, when we were first kind of starting out mainly as an Instagram page, um, we wanted to reach out to faculty and staff uh, just to kind of get their input because I mean, at the end of the day, while we are trying to, you know, help students, we want to foster a better environment for all people at Bryant, not just students or alum. Um, so that was kind of a really big thing we did in the beginning. Um, so that consisted of a lot of meetings back to back. Um, but, you know, that really kind of gave us a basis for um, what we wanted the initiative and I, I guess now organization to look like um, on the, you know, on the most basic level. Um, now that, you know, a lot of us are in school and we have jobs, it's kind of becoming a little bit tricky to balance everything. Um, but, you know, we're finding ways to work around that. Um, you know, we make our meetings kind of like on the weekends when we don't really have that many things to do. Um, but just kind of that stuff on the back end um, while continuing to run our Instagram page um, and just keep our followers as educated as possible. 
Yeah, and like you said, you started as an Instagram page and continue to have that social presence. The first post on the Be Better Bryant page went up on June 6th. Now, this was after you had all graduated from Bryant University and have all since gone on to do other things in full-time capacities. Why did you want to continue to be involved with the Bryant community despite no longer being students? Um, I think I can both speak personally um, and then also, I guess, on behalf of Be Better Bryant. I know personally, I just... I felt like doing something like this could make me really proud of Bryant um, because there have been moments where they have lacked the support that a lot of students, faculty, and staff have needed. Um, so for me, I thought of this more as like, I want to look back and be proud of where it is that I graduated from, but I also want to be able to fight for, and everybody else as well in this group, um, to make sure that everybody at, in the Bryant community is heard we kind of wanted to create this platform in this space, um, especially now that a lot of um, interactions because of the pandemic are all online, um, kind of create this um, online presence, social media presence where people can ask us questions, um, come to us with issues that, you know, Bryant has been facing for, for honestly quite some time, uh, but because of the recent um, tragedies um, really being um, newscasted um, throughout the country, we thought like this was a really great time. And I can also say because we were all seniors as well, um, I think because we all left school in March and we're never really able to finish what we wanted to do um, for our senior year, we never really like got the chance to give Bryant the goodbye. I think this was another way for us to kind of stay involved in the Bryant community. Um, yeah, and kind of along with what Ashley say, said, um, you know, be able to like do something that would be very proud of and be able to make an impact on the community as a whole. Yeah, and you really have made an impact so far. You know, about three months in, it's kind of crazy to see. Your first campaign, which aimed to raise money for an endowed fund for the Intercultural Center, which will assist marginalized and underprivileged students throughout their college careers, raised over $3,000 in the first 24 hours. By the end of the campaign, you had raised $55,420, surpassing your original $50,000 goal. First and foremost, congratulations. That is amazing and will absolutely have an immediate impact. Why do you think your first campaign was so successful? Um, so at least like from, like we knew that we had like a lot of momentum since like the um, murder of George Floyd, like a lot of people, they were like definitely very um, interested in like trying to do anything they could. And also since there was a pandemic, people weren't like really, I guess, like um, they didn't have time to think about like other things. So people were really engaged. And this really led us to just want to make like a real effort or like a real like impact at Bryant and we knew that like this the ICC and Dow Fund would um and then the fact that we just knew that like social media is just like such a huge thing right now that it's like really easy for people to just like share things and then tag their friends like that this could like really like gain a lot of steam and we could we definitely like thought in the beginning that we would be able to like reach our goal um just because we knew like the support that um, all the students and like faculty and alum and everyone and then also from like some administration they did give us like a lot of support with connecting us like different like alumni and like they had like their own fundraising efforts so and then another thing you've kind of started back in july you launched your summer and solidarity initiative which has given a platform to various topics relating to diversity equity and inclusion one of these sessions focused on voting leading up to november 3rd's general election you also have a highlight on your page specifically dedicated to voter resources why was it important for you to include voter education as part of be better bryant and these other wider initiatives so it was important for us to add, you know, voter suppression into the whole mix of things um, because we had seen that a lot of people who follow us or, you know, have heard of Be Better Bright wanted to do something that would make a difference. And we thought the, the biggest way to do that on, you know, a large scale is to go out and cast your vote. Um, no matter who you're voting for or what you believe, it's important to, you know, have your voice be heard on that kind of scale. Um, and we wanted to highlight some of the issues that surround, you know, voting and, you know, people, keeping people away from the polls. Um, so that uh, session really focused on a lot of uh, voter suppression tactics, um, like, you know, voter purging, which is just, you know, um, getting rid of people on who are eligible to vote. So some people will go into the polling station and then not be able to cast their vote and not even know it. Um, so we really talked about a lot of those um, different things that, you know, a lot of 
first time voters might not know anything about. So we just wanted to get that out there and you know, your vote matters and it's important to go out there and, and cast it. Um, but also in addition, it's important to vote and um, you can't just vote and then hope for everything to change, you know? So you gotta vote and then continue to do the work. It doesn't stop just there. And so that's really what we wanted to get out to our followers and uh, to the Bryant community. Yeah, that's great. I really like that vote and kind of idea. I think I'm going to use that, you know, down the line when I'm talking to friends and family. And it is interesting because in my research, I'm not a first time voter, I'm a second time voter, but there was so much I alone didn't even know. So how could I expect, you know, people in my community to be able to go out and vote and know how to do it, especially now, you know, with the vote in process. Um, so yeah, it's just been really interesting to kind of see this and be able to share it with other people. And it's great to see that you're doing it as well and really, really important. So going off of that, um, if you could just each kind of go around the, the table and tell us just one thing you wish young people better understood about the voter registration process and voting as a whole. Definitely just think more on voting small scale, voting for your community, voting for your state um, is something super important. It is something that I have learned and um, have unfortunately not done in the past. I was not very educated and that is my own fault. However, I have taken that not as like, oh, poor me, but I need to educate myself and I also need to do the research and I need to do the work to understand who it is exactly I'm voting for, not just voting Republican or not just voting Democrat, like voting for that person for specific reasons and kind of like staying very aware. So yeah, definitely vote small um, and with that, do your research. Just as important it is, as it is to vote for the president in some of these you know, big time um, positions, it's also important to vote on the small scale. Um, and I guess in addition to that, I would also say that, um, you know, it is important to stay educated and don't, you know, just uh, go with your, you know, political party, like alignments, um, do your research, see what you want, and then vote for that particular candidate. Um, but yeah, I think you nailed it on the head. Um, that's something that I hadn't done in the past. Um, and you know that is really where change starts. It starts at the bottom, not at the top. Um, so yeah. Kind of still relevant onto that topic, I would say um, I was very fortunate to have parents who were very adamant about voting no matter what it was for. Um, so I always knew like, okay, I need to be prepared to vote on election day, whatever that takes. Um, and I also um, would have conversations with my family about uh, certain policies that might be brought up about my town of, oh, do we want to spend money on like an extra library or something? And that's something that would be on the ballot. So that's something that I've been able to kind of um, learn and continue. But something that I think that I have learned actually recently is how important it is to also understand what each position you are voting for does. Um, I knew enough about certain positions, but I feel like I was really um, ignorant in terms of other positions and what their um, what the responsibilities were um, just even in our voter suppression uh, summer solidarity session just learning more about um, the secretary of state and what they have to do and kind of their um, again their responsibilities in office so just not only knowing the policies that they could enact but also just the responsibilities in office is something that has really just helped me understand more of the political process and then just being then um, able to be a more informed voter yeah, and going off of that, like during your um, summer solidarity sessions, did you find that the people kind of participating in these sessions had similar questions or concerns or just interest in learning a little bit more about um, kind of local elections or what each position actually does? Yeah, so I would say that we um, were kind of organized that session in particular to kind of give a history on voter suppression um, because of course it's historical it's nothing new um, some voter suppression um, tactics have reformed a little bit but you can see that they really are still based on um, historical ideas of why we are um, suppressing people's votes um, but then we kind of went into this um, like a polling of questions of like, do you do your research? Like, do you have questions? Did you know when your primaries are type of thing? Just to kind of get a basic understanding of how informed people are even before, like a couple months before an election. Um, and then we were able to kind of have more of like a open-ended roundtable discussion on, you know, things that we 
uh, things about voting that we didn't know or just questions we had. Um, so I think definitely coming from alumni to other students, I think we we're able to kind of like open that door for people to kind of ask us whatever they wanted. And they also, um, you know, felt comfortable enough to be able to reach out to us on Instagram or like the sources that we also post on our Instagram as well. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, and Nicole? Yeah, I mean, everyone kind of said everything that could definitely be said, but um, something that I think is definitely important, like one of the main reasons why we did um, decide to do voter suppression is just like learning the history of voter suppression and like why certain people did have like their votes like systemically like taken away from it and like how that still like impacts certain communities today. And um, so then I would definitely say um, that's kind of important for people just to like kind of, I guess, realize is that like not everyone can vote um, and like we shouldn't really be shaming people like who decide not to vote or who can't vote and we should really like try and find a way to um, work like and organize and like not just focus on just voting but like as we said like to do more than just voting because whoever goes into office um, on November 3rd like whatever issues we have today still like in our society in the United States isn't just going to go away with whoever comes in office so there's definitely more that like we all have to do and voting's like not going to fix it like just voting is not going to fix it. And also, um, I just would like to plug that um, we have our voter suppression um, PowerPoint up on our Google um, like share drive that's in like our Instagram bio. If people do like want to like look at the resources and then also like check out um, our PowerPoint. Yeah, that's great. Um, for anyone listening or watching right now, I will have that um, shared just to the wider community. So you'll be able to access that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been great to hear what you all have to say. And it's just, it's so interesting because when I first started this, I was having a conversation with one of my coworkers about how a lot of people take the ability to vote for granted and then don't do it. They don't understand, you know, not everyone could always vote. At the beginning, it was a very small, you know, portion of people that could vote and it has taken a lot of time and effort from different, you know, groups of people to make it that we can all vote and, you know, in this way. So it's just, it's really great to see you getting out that information, those educational resources. And I do appreciate you all taking the time today. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add about Be Better, Brian, before we end? Because I know you do have your kind of um, hats in a bunch of different places. I mean, I guess just follow us on Instagram at Be Better Bryant. We're also going to, we're working right now um, with some Bryant organizations to like release like a pledge. So it's basically like an eight week program where we're going to be like, um, like uploading like different like petitions or places to donate and like different like resources and stuff like that so people could like be consistently like learning um and something like a little quote that um that we find like really important that has to do with voting um is that like if your vote didn't matter they wouldn't be trying to take it away and that's something that we just like always like have talked about and we just think it's like really important for people to know yeah it's great yeah. Like, really good um note to end on but thank you all for being here it was really really great to hear your perspective um, and yeah, thank you. I mean, thank you for taking the time. I know you all have very, very busy schedules. Um, like Nicole said, Be Better Bryant can be found on Instagram by searching at Be Better Bryant. For more on voter registration, follow at NEC Sports on Instagram and Twitter, where we will be sharing educational nonpartisan information every Tuesday leading up to November 3rd's general election. That was Brianna Bruni, Nicole Kim, Ashley Costa, and Jana Blackstone, and this has been NEC Now.